everybody. Welcome to the It's Never Too Late show. I'm Michelle Ann Owens. I am your guest host for today. I'm super excited to turn the tables and to have your regular host, the amazing life and love transformational coach, Suzanne Oshima, be in the hot seat this time so she can give us all the advice and tips that we need to help us transform our midlives into our best lives, which is why we're really here. Um, and today we're gonna be discussing your fear of rejection is holding you back from finding love again. That's the topic of today and it's a big one. So with no further ado, welcome Suzanne. Ah, thanks so much, Michelle. I'm so excited to turn the tables and be in the hot seat this time. Heck yeah. Um, I, this is a big topic because um, we have all been there. I'm sure everyone out there listening or watching um, has felt rejected at one point or another, um, whether it was about their looks or about the amount of money they make or where they live or whatever it's about. Um, so when clients come to you and um, they are they have expressed these experiences to you when they're giving you their background um, what do you tell them what do you say in terms of handling this whole idea of oh I'm afraid to get back out there because this is going to happen again well I I before I answer that, I just want to add in, it's not just about, you know, being rejected for your looks or your body or whatever it is. It can also be that you're in this relationship with the man, right? And all of a sudden he realizes that he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you anymore. Ooh. He feels like you're not the one that he wants to be with Ooh, for the long term. Yeah. And that to me is the most painful one, right? Yes. Great example that I missed. That was a big one. Yeah. And I've been there too. I think I mentioned on one of our past episodes, there was a guy who, once he found out how old I was, he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't date you anymore. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? I know. Well, you know, it's really interesting. And, um, and you and I, and I think you should refresh everybody's memory who didn't see that interview is, um, he didn't want to date you because when he found out you were a certain age, he had a certain cutoff point and it also had to do with kids, right? Children. Exactly. Having yeah. kids. I mean, not yeah. because of his children. Right. Um, but so something like that where you felt completely rejected, Michelle, right? Is that something though that we have no control over? Like you can't change your age, right? right. You are what you are. And if exactly. that's what he's looking for, we can't change that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really look at it as like in that situation, I wouldn't look at your situation as rejection. I just look at it as he knew where he wanted to go. And he also knew that there could be some challenges and possibly having kids after a certain age. And so maybe he didn't want to um, really go through down that road. And maybe he felt more safe and secure with somebody that was a little bit younger. I'm yeah. not saying he was right, by the way. So ladies don't kill me, but I'm just saying that, you know, that's his, his, uh, road that he wants to go down and what he saw in it. Right. And mm -hmm. so I don't look at it as he's completely rejecting you. He just knew for himself what he needed in his life. Yeah. Yeah. But I've also been rejected in the past for various reasons, like, um, my career choices, which have been all over the place. I haven't done just one thing my whole life, like worked at the same, in the same industry. I've changed industries quite a bit. And I was judged by some guy that I had been dating and he couldn't understand why I kept toggling between like a traditional corporate career and doing something creative. He just couldn't see why that might happen. And to him, it, screamed irresponsible and but it was none of that and he also was like i can't be with someone who's like creatively jumping all over the place in this way or chaotically jumping around and i was just exploring my life you know what i mean and so i felt rejected by that too that i wasn't coming across as this like perfectly stable uh career woman with who's a lawyer you know so guess what michelle i'm gonna help you shift your mindset in that one okay okay so you took it as he rejected you because you weren't state where you kept switching industries and he took it as you were unstable or you didn't know what you really wanted, right? Yes, exactly. I'm going to shift your mindset into this was a man that couldn't support Michelle 
and where she was going in her career choices and be accepting of it. So he was actually the wrong man for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he was that too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's out of there. God, got her. <laughs> but so we're doing a lot of talking about my personal situations. <laughs> so there are women out there who have had so many other kinds of uh, scenarios. So what do you tell them? I mean, bes- I mean, you told me how to shift my perspective. How do you help your clients also shift their shift their perspective for other situations and to um, overcome this whole fear that oh this is going to happen again um, you know a guy has rejected me because of X Y Z before what do I do to to not feel that anymore Right right well guess what it I hate to say it but it's a part of dating you're going to get rejected. I wish it wasn't true. It's going to happen. It's just a part of the cycle of dating, right? And in order to get to where you really want to be, you're going to have to have some heartbreak. You're going to have to have some rejection. If you don't, I mean, you're probably the luckiest woman in the world if you've never had your heart broken, (laughs) but it's the path and the journey to get there. And unfortunately, we're going to get our heart broken, but you're what I'd like to always share with women, because sometimes I've actually seen where this will actually block her from getting out there. Like she's like, yeah, I can't get out there a date because I'm so afraid of getting rejected is what they don't realize is that's actually preventing you and stopping you from getting what you truly want. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's just like with the job, right? If you kept getting rejected for jobs and you kept being told you're the wrong person for the job, or I'm sorry, we hired somebody else, would you give up on looking for a job? No, you would keep going, right? Until you found the right job. Why is it when it comes to the right man and the lasting relationship and partner that we want in life, why would we give up? Why wouldn't we keep going? Because I honestly think it's probably more important because it should last longer than a job. Yeah. But I mean, I've seen people get hung up on rejections and they'll continuously talk about them over and over. And even with respect to a job, like there's a guy that um, I know who keeps saying, oh, I went up for that job. And this other guy that I know got it. And I still, "Mm, I really deserved that job, you know, or I really deserved that promotion. And -and so-and-so got promoted and they talk about it a lot. Why do you think that happens? Why do we go on repeat in our minds about these rejections? How do we get rid of that repeat and stop that tape from playing over and over and over so that we can get past it? Right. Well, you have to process it in your mind and really think about what really happened and helping you let go and move on. Because like in that, in that situation where this guy keeps bringing up this job that he didn't get, it's like, you got to let go of the past. If you want to move forward, if you keep staying stuck there, you're staying back in that place of failure. Yeah. And I, I don't yeah. know about you, Michelle, but I don't want to live in the place of failure. Yeah, I yeah. didn't get it, but I want to move on. Or so, that relationship or marriage didn't work out, but I want to move on. If I'd yeah. say stuck there, that's a horrible place to live. Totally, totally. So with respect in the dating world, in the love world, because I think we're all more concerned about that. <laughs> yeah. Because most of us are, are more you know, here for our next amazing love story, <laughs> I think, in many cases. Um, but you you already mentioned you're going to get rejected when you're out there dating. It's a part of the journey. So what can women do to minimize the the pain involved with that or the setbacks? What can they do to to keep going and to keep that positive attitude? Yeah, so first of all is to realize that it may not have anything to do with you. Ah. It actually may have to do with himself and his own personal issues, or maybe something that he hasn't worked through and he can't even be in a relationship with you or anybody else. Yeah. And so it's important to realize, like I said, it may not have anything to do with you. And I know sometimes the first place a woman goes is she becomes that self-critic and she goes, oh my God, it must've been something I said. It must've been something I did. Oh my God, he's probably not attracted to me or whatever it is. And that always breaks my heart when a woman goes into the self-critic is because she's putting herself down. And like I said, it may not have anything to do with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I always find when a woman is in that place is 
you're in that place then of you're waiting for a man to choose you. And mm -hmm. I always tell women, like when I work with women, I bring you up the inner foundational piece of confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth of bringing you up to that point where you feel so good about yourself that you become the chooser. Like, Heck, is yeah. he a good enough man to be with me? Not, oh, I hope he chooses me. No. Are you, you need to prove to me why I should date you and want to be with you for the long term. Heck yes. I love that. That's so empowering. And that's, that's where we all should be in terms of our mindset. I think it's not always easy to be there, you know? Yeah. And so that's why we need someone like you to coach us and to keep us on track. It's really easy to get thrown off, especially if you repeatedly get rejected in a dating situation. I actually had a friend um, who told me, and this is, this goes a little deeper. So I would love your insight on this situation. She was, uh, she had dated a guy they broke up amicably and stayed friends and have a similar social circle. So they would often run into each other at parties and such, and we're still very cool with each other. Well, like fast forward two years, they decided to try to start dating again. And this time around, it was very intense, very, uh, very passionate. And, and she said, you know, the second time around, I actually thought, I think we're going to get married this time. Like it's really working. And she felt this connection with him and he spent a lot of time with her. Well, she found out after a few months only that he had been also simultaneously having sex with two of her friends in the social circle. Oh my God. Yeah. And it just, it completely shattered so much in her brain because she had already sort of gone down this track of, oh, he's going to be my husband now. Like this is like the perfect relationship now I see why it didn't work the first time, why it's working now, et cetera, et cetera. And then she just got, you know, sideswiped with this crazy information. And then he ended up uh, admitting to her that, you know, he has an addiction to intimacy. He has an, ad not sex addiction necessarily, but an addiction to being like connected closely and having it just anytime, anywhere kind of thing. I don't know if that qualifies as a sex addiction. I have no idea, but you know, she was like, what am I going to do with this? So now she's sort of in this headspace where she doesn't even want to date at all. It just really blew her mind. Oh, well, yeah. And you, I know you, you mentioned this just happened. Of course she doesn't want to date right now because that's traumatic. That's totally traumatic. Here she is in her mind thinking one thing and here he's not even fully committed to the relationship. It's like she felt a huge sense of betrayal. And I guess my questions would be, number one, I'm not an expert in this, but he sounds like a sex addict. Yeah. Number one. But number two, the other thing that I would wonder about this man is, is he really emotionally unavailable? Because mm. here he is having sex with three different women, right? And then the third thing that she may or may not have thought about is he also honestly sounds like a narcissist. Oh, yeah. I generally go to that. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the the explanation for that kind of behavior. Um, the problem, and and that would actually explain why she felt like he was connected to her, that there was an emotional connection. Because I think with someone emotionally unavailable, you know that they're emotionally unavailable. Like they won't say they love you or they have trouble calling you their girlfriend or all of those kind of things. And that wasn't the issue with him. She felt like it was super connected. Well, so here's the thing. Though I, I would caution that because a narcissist can say, I love you, say that you're the most amazing woman that I've ever had in my life and I've never felt this way. However, he can also be very emotionally disconnected because of whatever's happened in his past life, yeah. right? Yeah. And well, so yeah. narcissists are very trained well. They know the right thing to say to a woman to lure her in, get her hooked, mm -hmm. and then she's fully emotionally invested, but then they're off also getting attention from other women because it's almost for them an addiction to have this attention yeah. and tell other women that, oh, you know, you're the most amazing woman. And so I bet he's, he was saying the same exact things to these other women, I right? Agree. 
Yeah. And you're right about the, the narcissist thing. It, they don't have a, they don't feel they, they don't have the ability to feel empathy and to feel those connections. So, but they know what to say to mimic that idea of empathy and connection. And so maybe that's what she felt was real and it wasn't yeah. real. And the know. other, the other part that I would share with you, Michelle, that, um, I wouldn't say this to her, but I noticed when you were sharing the story with me is it kept coming up as she felt really connected. She felt like this was going to be the man she was going to spend the rest of her life. I never heard any parts of him or we feeling that way. And yeah. so I wonder if it was just with her feeling this way, but he didn't really feel this way yeah. or of it moving forward. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, I only heard the story from one side, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I don't know if she what she was feeling was just because she was on that track and that was what she was trying to manifest for the relationship rather than really knowing where he was at. And I honestly don't know if they had that conversation. Like you said, uh, people need to have that conversation about being exclusive and about being in a relationship before really going to that next step. So maybe she was, you know, jumping the gun. I have no idea. Um, but, but I think the overriding theme is that she felt so rejected by him that um, now she's not sure what to do to overcome it, except to distract herself by being with friends, by traveling, by seeing, you know, she's traveled so much since then. She's just trying to distract herself basically from the, the pain. Right. So I'm going to reframe this because she wasn't actually rejected. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Yeah. She wasn't rejected. I actually think she, first of all, dodged a huge bullet. Mm. And I actually think she's really lucky. She doesn't see it right now because her heart's broken that she found this out because had she gone down the path, of getting married to him, trust me, he wasn't going to give up whether it was those other two women or another two women in the future is as much as her heart has broken, been broken. It's, it's better. She found out now who he truly is because obviously yeah. you don't want to be married to a man like that. No. That is Ugh. horrible. Absolutely horrible. And, um, you know, so the way she should overcome it is to not see herself as being rejected. That's what I heard. And, and then what do you think about her approach of just like putting herself fully into her own life and what she's doing and traveling and seeing friends and all of that? Is that the correct way to deal with rejection or should she be willing to start dipping her toe back into the dating pool um, and start trying to find somebody else? Um, this is what I would say. It's... Um, she, I think it's great that she wants to go and travel and do all of those things. I think that's awesome. But if you're doing it to distract yourself from, I don't want to date and, and I haven't fully healed, that's also not good either. It's really t important to go through that healing process because she was betrayed, quite honestly. Yeah. It's not just rejected or he broke up with her. It's no, she was actually betrayed and betrayal mm -hmm. is so much worse because here she opened up her heart. She trusted him. She was yes. vulnerable and it's worse, right? Yeah. And she thought there was a future with him, whether or not he thought that it doesn't matter. She thought it. And so she's completely heartbroken. So it is really important for her to go through the healing process. Um, and, I, I can give her an exercise and not obviously just her, but any women out there who have ever felt this is I always tell the women to don't go down the road of being the self-critic because that's a rabbit hole, right? Mm -hmm. And blaming yourself, but also doing an exercise. And it's so simple. It's so simple, but no one ever does this is draw a line down a sheet of paper, write down all the good things about him. On the other side, write all the bad things that you didn't like about him. And then 
really ask yourself after you write it all out, because when you see it in black and white, you'll start to see sometimes that the bad side is actually longer than the good side. Sometimes we <laughs> tend to only remember the good stuff and the oh. chemistry and attraction and all of that. And we forget the bad things that we actually didn't like. And she may find that the bad side is actually pretty significant mm -hmm. and that I ask her to really ask herself after looking at that list, was he truly the right man for her that she saw herself with for the long term? And then the second part of that is also going back to the beginning of the relationship is asking herself, were there some red or yellow flags that she saw, because I bet she did, that she ignored? or chose not to really address with him mm -hmm. and thought that, oh God, if I address it with him, that you know what, he's gonna run. Yeah, yeah. I love that advice. I'm definitely gonna pass it along. <laughs> and I will tell her about your coaching, of course. And for all of the ladies out there listening, uh, guess what? Suzanne has a free gift for you that she wants to tell you about. So Suzanne, do you wanna share that with the ladies? Yes, so I have an amazing video series. It's called The Secrets About Men After 40 and Beyond Video Series. And what I share in this video series is the secrets on how to meet a quality man, how to attract and keep the right man, and okay. why it doesn't always move forward into a lasting relationship. So if you'd like that free video series, you can click right on the video. And if you're listening to the podcast, you can just go to yournextamazingstory.com. Awesome. And while you're there, everybody, at yournextamazingstory.com, please check out Suzanne's personal story that's on there, um, which brought her to the place where she is now giving all of us advice and helping us to take control of our lives and to transform our midlife, our awesome midlife, into our best life, right? Uh, Suzanne, as always, it's such a pleasure and an honor to be your guest host. So thank you for having me and thank you for coming on here and sharing all of your wisdom with us.